Good morning, Technicoder. How are you doing today? Let's see if we can get this uh, working. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, first, let's look through what we're doing today uh, and what we did last time. So we made it possible to... Uh, you've been awake for 45 seconds. <laughs> That is not very, very many seconds, but uh, good morning. Uh, yesterday, two days ago, Thursday, we made it possible to work with the uh, console and rework the uh, room system to load all the neighbors when we enter a room. And the we did not make the boss bombs explode, but we made them bounce, which made it a lot harder as well. That is cool. And today we are then going to make a movable platform and pressure plate. It is a very short time to get to the moon. Some people would say that uh, it's the fastest time anyone has ever gotten to the moon. So this one is potentially a really big task. There are many ways to do movable platforms, and uh, I was trying to figure out a an easy way to do it. But... Yeah, so pressure plates... I um, think they are going to be... Two types. One is going to be pressure plates that you walk onto, and they're going to be pushed down forever. With like a button and the other one needs to have something on them to uh, keep them open you will have to put something on them or just uh, walk onto them as um, something else is happening to like open a door so an arrow can fly through it so we can add some puzzle levels or puzzle rules uh, I'm really excited as well the reason I'm only having two movable platforms this time is that uh, it's probably going to take all stream, if not two streams, unless I do it well. So, the easiest way, uh, there are two easy ways to do this. One would be to just child the player to the platform when you're on it. Uh, that is the easiest way. What up, Chris? Alright, I need to check if there's something other than Trigger Fire, because Trigger Fire just stops working after a few hours of stream, at least for me. Uh, <laughs> all the claps. Good morning. So cute. Uh, yeah, so the easiest is to uh, child the player to the movable platform, and then you get the speed from the platform, because that's how it works. The other thing is to grab the last speed the platform had, or well, from the previous position to the new position, and you apply that to the player as well. The problem with this is that you will, if there is a uh, acceleration of the platform, or when it starts moving, you will be one frame behind. So you will feel a slight move to the side uh, if you do that. Unless you move the whole platform first and then you calculate the player position. Because then you can get the current frames uh, movement. Want to ask me to review some code when I have a chance? Sure. Uh, what kind of code? Is it Unity code? <laughs> if so, I'd like to. C sharp code? Oh no. <laughs> I don't know, C sharp. Drop MMO pug. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'll just uh, post it. If I get done with my two tasks. One, one second. about that I really had to sneeze <laughs> if I get done with my two tasks I I can check it
if I'm doing well today, I will uh, check out your code. Cool, cool. Doing good. Great to hear. Okay, so let's get this started. Which um, uh, captain? Which method would you? How how would you approach this to have the player stand on the movable platform? Because if we start now. Um, the behavior we have is uh, oh, it needs to be grounded. And ground. Or maybe this is the one that needs to have ground. All the children, and then we stand on it. Is moving is true. As you can see, I'm not moving. That one is. You first write 10 to 20 units as it ensure that logic is correct. Well, I can assure you that the logic is correct with the moving. It's moving back and forth as it should. But no, I'm thinking. I'm probably. I'm going to try to. I have an idea. We'll cast to enable the collision box. The collision box will always be on there. But. I have been thinking about doing a raycast to see if we're on the platform or not, yes. Uh, is it being treated as ground now? So we need to know that we're on a movable platform. So I need to do a raycast, yes, to see what kind of thing I'm standing on. Oh, I have an Id another idea. This one could be actually interesting. I just thought of something. <laughs> so we have the movable platform. Uh, make sure I understand. You want to play to move with the platform if they are stationary. Yes. So if you jump on a moving platform, you should follow along with the platform. So it could go wherever and you should be on it. It could be an elevator, it could be a train, it could be anything that moves, really, that you can stand on. I'll be right back. Uh, I need to <laughs> blow my nose. I'll be right. Probably make the platform know if the player object is on it, and the platform would update the player position velocity to match. Either that or the platform would have a listener to other others could register on when they're on it, and the platform would notify the object when it has moved. Yeah. And the object can choose to update its position if it would like. That would be the more general solution. If you only ever 
intend to have the player move on moving platforms than just to play in this level. Yeah. Could also be enemies standing on them. Yeah, where you fight the enemy up on the platform. Yeah, kind of like an elevator that moves up. It will that will just work because uh, of the ground collision. But so oh, I really like the uh, idea of registering when they're on it. So kind of like an event. I really like that. That's a good one. Hmm. So, the thought I had was to make, <clears throat> to get this, uh, it's going to be a combination of what I was thinking and what you said. Uh, I will. make a new collider on this one with my aka uh, box collider 2d it will be a trigger that I'm going to move up a little mm. make it a tiny bit smaller so uh, the player will touch this and we will know that it's on the platform. So that's one way we could register it and uh, unregister if we want to. <clears throat> but for the player, I would need to do a create a no, wait. I'm just thinking through my whole entity system. We have the entity moving platform component and. I am making a box cast down here. I don't think I need to do that. If we have the event we can listen to. But how would I? Do that if I have a trigger box collider? I don't think I can. But it would be a lot more uh, performant. Write a platform attach script for the platform and on trigger enter. Check if the colliding object is player. So parent the player to the platform. <laughs> then on trigger. Yeah, and that's one way I was thinking. The problem I have with uh, parenting is my whole entity moving platform component system. So I can't really parent because I'm. Um, Everything <laughs> I can't speak. Everything I do uh, uh, is changing my position info position, which is not my actual transform position. So I change my transform position at the end of all my calculations. So I don't think I think they would kind of clash. I don't think I can do that. And that is... Mm. What up, Tram? Welcome, welcome. I think that would be a... an easy way to do it. But the thing is, I might also want to have the velocity when I jump off the platform. If the platform is really fast and move, and you have a lot of speed on it, uh, and you jump, I don't want it to be going back to your normal speed. I want to keep the speed until you collide with the ground. I think. So for that I can't do the on-trigger exit. That way. The on-trigger exit... Well, on-trigger enter would... No, I can't do the on-trigger enter either. 
it's too much, uh, it's too hard to combine it. So I think I'm actually going to use a tag. The first tag I'm using. I'm going to go back here and do my uh, box cost. The problem with doing a box cost like this is if I collide with more than just a movable platform. So if we let me open up the key, that you show. If we have the movable platform and it's like right on now, this is. Offset by a little. Uh, and it should be on top of this. Which one would it prefer? And it would be completely random. So then I would need to do a box cast all to see and prioritize a movable platform. Yeah, it will be, but the movable platform is still ground layer, so that would be the same as ground. I don't have too many layers to work with, and uh, I would like to save as many uh, as possible. So yes, we're going to do a tag check. I think there's the music a little bit. Uh, last time I checked my VOD, it was really low. <laughs> Compared to my to my bots. I think I'm going to do a box cast all, yes. And then we need to do a for we loop through this. Um, and I should probably do a non alloc. That's not what it calls. All. Well, you can't do that with all. Or is that. Oh, yeah, that is all. Cool. And then we will create a. Uh, must hit. Yeah, I just had to think a little bit. Let's. And that would be. Let's cap it at five. Can't you do that? We need. No? Okay. We need to specify ray cost hit. Okay. Uh, so we do four by zero by less than. Uh, Plus plus I. You don't think I would have a lot of things overlapping? Well, you never know. It would be really annoying to uh, imagine the scenario where you spend a year on doing this and then you have uh, like say that you have chairs on an elevator and you're standing on top of like five chairs and uh, you're colliding with several things and uh, you're you don't have enough hits in here and you would be like why doesn't it work when i stand on the chairs but it works when i stand on the elevator if you have i mean allocating five is not a lot of memory It could be a lot of things in the future, so might as well set a reminder and increase it. Yeah, why would I set a reminder to increase it if I can just increase it for now? If I uh, is larger equal to five, we break too hard to forget about it. Nah, that's way too many. A 
Okay. Where would you... Hit. We need to also do... We need the result. Out. Hit. I don't need these open. Uh, those old tabs in here. Cool. Ray cost it 2D. Oh, it's uh, 2D. <laughs> You're working out, but you have me on the big screen. What, what kind of workout is it? Is it, uh, are you, are you doing burpees? Do more burpees. Because everyone uh, loves burpees. Just go the, the pizza from the plate of the mouth to, to the plate of the mouth. So, Graham, I could do it here, uh, debug log error. Need more things than we allocated. Just opening and closing the first ticket. Yeah, that is a good bicep workout I'm going to climb in this evening, so that will be that will be neat. I'm actually going to work out. Okay, if we have a hit, uh we need to check if it's can't do that uh game. Lighter and part tag, yeah. And it was plat. What did I call it? Uh, mobile. Yeah, it was mobile, movable platform. I just haven't uh, refreshed. I don't think it has it in the uh, hmm. in the memory. Buy it back core today. Nice. Does it have this now? If I do mobile, hmm? oh well. Um, we just compare the tag, and you should always use compare tag instead of doing dot tag equals or tag dot equals. Because uh, compare tag doesn't allocate any memory or garbage or uh, for the compare so uh we found our platform let's do a debug login here we're on the platform yeah i just want to see that i'm on, that i'm on the platform The problem now, I think, is that I'm going to be on the platform. Uh, never. This is not tagged. Oh, well, um, first of all, let's let that movable platform. Second of all, let's grab the uh, entity moving platform component. Uh, this one should be loaded. And we make a prefab out of this. Entity component. Yeah. Then we move this onto the player, because uh, the player needs this component. Now we try and play again. On the platform. We now know when we're on the platform. That is good.
for this one instead of getting the moss ground here let's do a what do you get back is an integer right yes uh I have a grand mask. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. Also, by the way, uh, a while ago I set one of these follower goals on Twitch. And that is at, um, I think it's 8.50 I said it at, and I'm at 8.49. So one more follower and we will uh, reach that goal. Which is nice. Okay, so we're on the platform. What do we do? Should we... If we can get the component... Um, I think we should save the platform in a variable and then we'll just check if it's the same object we're hitting. Yes. Uh. Yes. Does the movable platform has any component? It does. that I'm coughing a lot this morning okay so did we we have the movable platform script so let's say that uh, right movable platform what is a movable argument and that one get the uh, this component uh, platform what I want to do though is to also save the um, platform instance ID initialize the FT platform in I'm not sure I understand. And this is not the movable platform. The movable. I mean, I'm going to have many movable platforms. This is the mobile platform. Afterwards, you would always need to check against it. Like, the uh, reason I want to save the active platform and the instance ID. <clears throat> oh, you can't do that. Can you, we're getting the hash code be thought the hit would be request to hit, but that wouldn't have a. Just get the collider. What I want to do is I want to look through all of them first. I kind of want to do this twice, uh, looping through them. And just the... We're getting... Comparing the tag is not very heavy. So it's, uh, it should be fine to do... If it's lighter, get instance ID uh, is equal to 
it is not equal, we set the actual platform. And uh, we should break here. And if we do, uh, uh, well, in this case, I, I have to use a for loop. So I'm using the box cast non alloc. This is not allocating any memory or garbage. Uh, so what we do is we define a, an array of how many hits we want to be able to take in. And we send in the result. Uh, or the array and get the results back in the array. So this will be filled up with uh, with it, and back we get how many we hit. So we we could loop through the if for each on the array, but we will always have five <coughs> allocated in the array. So we'll always loop through five, and if they are not allocated, um, so the non alloc works like this. If Let's say first frame, you hit three, so one hit, two hit, and uh, three hit, so we got three objects. Next frame, you only hit two objects. Um, let's say platform one, platform two, platform three. And the next frame, you only hit one object. Uh, let's do this four, none, and uh, five, none. Then next time you only hit one object, so we have platform one here, but the array would still have platform two and uh, platform three. They are still in the array, they are not being changed, we're just changing how many we hit. So that's why we need to use the amount we're hitting to, uh, because we're not nulling the uh, ones after. They are not uh, being changed. We, here we only hit one. Um, that's why we can't do A for each. Because all the data is still in the array. Uh, yeah. and there might be a problem here uh, when we stand between two movable platforms. No, that will be fine. I will not use hits outside of uh, this loop. But since we're um, changing hits in here, I want to allocate the memory beforehand. I don't want it to create it. The reason it's 5 is because we can hit up to 5 items max. Or on the stack. You mean to just create a new array every time? A raycast hit is not a struct, I believe. It is a struct. But would it... Would it be faster if I... But doesn't we... Hmm. Would it? I mean, here we only do one allocation and... Uh... Yeah, it sounds. <laughs> what you're saying sounds uh, accurate. 
I'm just thinking. I think a lot of people usually use hits outside of uh, like overthinking optimization is always not yet. A lot of people I've seen does uh, hit objects, so they save the integer there is hit. Uh, so every time they check and um, just save the integer of all the index. And then they use the index to grab things from the array. If the index is set. It's a struct, so we could potentially just uh, do that. So just because of that, let's uh, let's do it. But why not? I don't really. How can this be the same? Wouldn't... Threat cannot be null, so how do we know if there is... We're not boxed out, oh, right? We don't actually need that, since we are... Just looping through that, alright. Cool. Right, I do know the best. Uh, Looping through the hits, and since we look at 5 max, um, we could do a. Uh, um, max. Oh. We only allocated 5, and that means uh, if we hit more than 5, then I'm just going to debug log and break. But wouldn't this be a... No, we're hitting the ground all the time, almost to it. But I was thinking if we're not hitting anything, we're always allocating this. No, you're not being annoying, I'm just thinking this through. So, potentially, if this would be something that happens very rarely, then wouldn't it be better to not allocate it all the time? Why would I... No, the thing is, if, even if it's more than five, I want to, I want to break, because we can't go over five on the index. Hit can still be more than five. We need to have a break in here. But yeah, we could move the debug log, yes, and make it debug assert. That is true. But I will still need to have... Isn't that how you do it? Oh, uh... If hit is more than max alloc, or equal to, then we hit more things than we allocated. It's like, if this is true, then we... Yeah. Oh, you want to assert... Oh, that it's less than... Okay. 
you want to make sure it's less than. I was like, what it's going to, uh, when it's going to complain. Not what is uh, allowed. I rarely use a debug assert, as you might have noticed. Okay, so what I want to do is also add a bool here um, with objects. I just need this to <clears throat> put object is true and if it object you go pumping <laughs> I run okay okay thank you all for the uh, for the information I really care much about this it's not really that uh, I don't usually need to optimize it that much. Uh, but now we've done it. And if active platform instance ID is not minus one. We'll do active platform is null and uh, active is minus one. Good stuff. Now we need to know what we should do with the <laughs> with the actual mobile platform when we got it. We got the mobile platform. Uh, so the first thing would be to get the speed. So if we, I'm going to do a uh, thing. So unit has to script execution order in how it uh, groups things together when it runs uh, a script. You can see that it's the, here that um, entity, entity main, I set it really late. But it means that all my default scripts will run before uh, my own um, my entity main, which is my main script that handles the whole entity, which is good. So I don't have to add any uh, movable platform information in here because I want the movable platform to move before the player so we can get the uh, so we can get the data from the movable platform how much it moved and send that to the player let's go to move what do I call it movable how do you even how do you spell movable it should be like this right Oh, yes. Did I type it in here? No, it's just movable platform. Okay. Uh, this wall captain. Captain, whenever we meet in the future, because it's going to happen, we have to go climbing together. That would be cool. When you use move towards, that's, this is the movement speed, right? The max it's allowed to move. So, uh, we could do... Previous position would be transform position. And... Uh, we would have the... I guess it's Jim calling Captain's Wolf. And the, move, the, the amount we moved, uh, the distance would be just uh, as for position minus a previous position. And now it's going to tell me we can introduce a variable. And it's going to look ridiculous. This is how Ryder wants me to. Uh, do this. Couldn't we just do this? That no, we can't. Okay. Uh, right, knows best. I mean, it's not wrong because we're assigning the transform uh, to transform one. But I'm when you work 
on mobile games, you usually have a different mono behavior. You make a base mono behavior for your own script, uh, which caches the transform and everything on awake. You do not have to uh, get it every time, but on uh, PC it doesn't matter. To be fair, you may think it's your house. It's looking... It's just me looking in the mirror calling myself that. Aww. That's all that matters, Captain. Yeah, you're always telling us to love ourselves, so you should also love yourself. Now we have the move distance, uh, and let's make that a property. Um, vector 3, uh, distance move frame. Private set. Public. Yeah, it's public. Uh, so let's do this. And that is this as well, this frame. And we set that. Yeah. So then here on anti moving platform. This chrono trigger, yes, it is okay. Um, we get the move of the platform, and after all of this, we'll do the uh, handle platform. move player, handle move platform. Uh, and here we will do a I don't want to shake against no, it's uh, <laughs> unoptimal. If it's minus one, which will be my thing, we're going to return. So when I visualize this it's going to be minus one. So that's a thing. The, if we have the movable platform, then we need the position info. So, uh, position would be position info, position value, and then we position plus equals uh, movable platform. What do I call it? Active platform. Distance move this frame, and then we position info, position the value is position. I should probably make it possible to just set the position without having to get the value and everything. But that would mean being values changed. Yeah, I could probably do a create a No, I can't. Because what I want to do with the position is to add to the position. And if we have other types in value change, we can't just add to them. So no, we'll have to be go with this. Okay, we wrote a lot of code. I think not that much, but a bit of code. Let's see how many errors we get when you jump on the platform or before even none cool cool i'm not even sure it's working <laughs> i removed the debug logs i'm not even sure i'm colliding with it properly uh it's moving cool. oh look we did it Look at you go. Look at me go. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the stream. I'm heading out now. Bye bye. Thank you. No. Um, that was way faster than I thought.
Look, the plan game is finished. But this is pretty cool. Um, yeah, you might see me come up with ideas on the fly soon, and those ideas are the best. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, we're still missing one thing that I wanted. So, now when you jump, um, you don't have any velocity. And I kind of want to have velocity while... Until you touch the ground or touch anything else, I want to have the velocity. So I'm going to add another variable to keep the velocity even when you leave it. Speaking of flying, instead of you refactoring code, you're just playing with your flying ability. <laughs> well, it looked really smooth. It looked really amazing. Uh, so we want to have the vector 3 uh, velocity. So, uh... When we hit something, when we're in here, I want to grab the the platform. This is move this frame would be the velocity. Now, when do I reset this? It would be when I collide with anything, really. Let's set the velocity here. Uh, the captain, this is how you write bugless code, and you don't need unit tests. No bugs to see here? No, no. Uh, so, if we don't hit an object... No, I kind of want to have... Here's the thing. Um, if we're on a movable platform, so this loop will only be for movable platform. To get the components and everything. Then I need to do another one. Where I need to do, like, if, uh, if the object is false. Um, if the object is false, we could combine these two. So we could do an if and do this in here instead. We don't need two ifs. So if we don't have an ID, we reset the active platform. Um, but that is wrong. It should be hit movable platform. Platform. So now this will be separate. No, it will not. Uh, let's, let's, let's have those two together again. This will be if hit is larger than zero. And if hit mobile... No? Sorry, sorry, we didn't hit the mobile platform. Then velocity would be like the zero. But we hit something. But it should also be if we didn't hit anything. So they can't be together, no. Uh, so they need to be two different tips. Okay, uh, let's... Because we only want to reset the velocity when... We hit something that isn't a movable platform. Because if we hit a movable platform, we want to set the velocity to what the movable platform is. And here we'll always add the distance mode to this frame. Um, but we'll have to do it without returning. If it's not equal to minus one, we will do all split this. 
And then we'll also do uh, position plus equals uh, velocity. I think. Walk normally on it. Oh, uh, it's moving. Ooh. Oh, wait. <laughs> We're moving way too fast. Oh, uh, I know why. <laughs> this is an interesting uh, behavior. <laughs> I'm not pressing anything, it's just. No hands. No, it's like I'm not doing anything, it's just. Uh, Moving twice because if we're on the platform, uh, we need to move it by the distance. No, actually, this is not what I should do at all. We can just add velocity because velocity will always be set. New feature. Just adding velocity would be enough here, I think. Because we're setting the velocity when we are uh, on it. And it's not working. <laughs> oh, we can't do... Was it velocity... It is larger than zero, and we did not hit the... What are we hitting? It's debug. Waiting for it to attach. No, it doesn't get in there. Okay. Does it get in here? No? It should be in here all the time, yes. It should get in here. Yes. Okay, now when I jump, it's hitting this. But we're not getting in there, so velocity should still be set. Really how little I'm moving? Probably per frame, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm good. I prepared. So if we're not grounded, we're uh, not doing anything in here. Uh. And that's something. I'm going to change. However, I think it would be kind of good to have the grounded check because we are going to be grounded when we're standing on the platform. And that's when we want to get the velocity and everything and doing the because we're not going to move when we're not ground. We're not going to do the checks when we're not grounded. So, um, if collision info is grounded, we're going to do. And then I'm going to do a uh, uh, zero. I can do an enter. Movable platform. Just 
move all of these outside of yeah, that should be all so we'll land on the platform we'll be grounded and that's when we do all the checks for the mobile platform I think it sounds good in my head moving See? now it works let's set the movement speed on this platform to like 10 it's moving <laughs> so now when we jump Maybe we can increase it even more. Cool. Yeah, that was really weird. It's not... having trouble with this um, I'm not sure if it's because I'm in the unity editor or if my things are working against each other because when I jump I can feel like a lag in my in my player I'm not sure if you can see that on stream but if I, for example, hold left here, you can see it kind of... Uh, what do you call it? I don't know what you call it. Is it uh, noticeable on stream? If I do maximize this. Oh no, it's just a an editor thing, I think. But now when I maximized, it didn't feel the same. Let's see if I... No, it was just an editor thing. But when I did it, it's lagging a bit more when, I are in, when I'm in this view. But when I do it here, it kind of lags back and forth. But when I maximized it... Then it works fine. Now my question is: Should I? Uh, uh, I'm thinking instead of keeping the the uh, we're going to keep the velocity when you are moving in that direction. I'm thinking that. If you are going, if your velocity is to the right and you press left, then we are going to remove all the velocity. But if you keep hold right, you will gain extra speed, like your normal movement speed plus the velocity. I think that would be a good uh, mechanic because then you can kind of control uh, what you're doing. But it has been an hour. I'm going to take a small break here and. Uh, I will be back in a few minutes. And then we'll finish up the movable platform that I thought would take more than an hour. Uh, <laughs> so I'll be right back.
Okay. Okay. Let's uh, continue with the movable platform. Uh, where was I? Right. When I hold the direction you're jumping, you will get speed. Or if you're not... Uh, hold, if you hold the opposite direction, you will, you will remove the... Uh, the velocity. But that would also mean that if you jump in the opposite direction of uh, where the platform is moving, you will not have... You will get a normal speed. Uh, I think that would be... It would feel so much better than keeping the velocity that the platform has. So we need a... We have the platform direction, but we need to grab the... Have it, uh, what is it called? It's not the position, it should be entity movement input info. I think that is the one that, yeah, XY. Move. Movement input info. Now we got that info, and we need to check. Uh, so if it is zero, else, so this is the uh, when we're not hitting anything. That means we're in the air, and this is when we are checking uh, velocity dot x, and we're also going to check. Uh, Moment input info x. How do we do this properly? <laughs> we could do in like the easiest way would be if we uh, do moment input info x is less than zero and. Uh, Velocity that x is larger than zero, then we set velocity to zero. Huh? And then we'll do the same in the other direction. Let's see if just change the arrows here. It's probably a much nicer way of doing this, but this will give me the behavior I want, and it's very easy to read. Well, not very easy to read, but it's good enough. Now when I, yeah, that seemed to work. So when I'm going to the right now, I keep the speed, and when I press left, I stop. So that way you can get some, uh, you'll get the, hmm. I think that I might want to change this in. We didn't feel too well. Uh, if you keep holding one direction like this, you should get the speed. But if you don't, I think you shouldn't. Because it's really annoying to... If you go like this, and then you let go, you keep moving. It should only be if the... If it's equal to or... Uh, less or equal to or more equal to. I think. If you're not holding a direction, you should stop. It means that you would stop when you jump straight up as well. Let's move in. So if I do this, I would just... I actually think I want it. But you can get the speed from it. Yeah, 
I'm liking that. Yeah. All right, we got movable platforms. So my next test here is... Uh, put an enemy on it. Let's grab the Spear Angel and put it right there. I'm not going to set any patrol points, so this is going to give me some arrows. But let's go to the Spear Enemy. And we are going to add the uh, movable platform to move. Let's add that component. So if I run this now, I think... I can do is moving. True. No, because... Because of that. Uh, good morning, Royal Sea Dub Gaming. How are you doing today? Let's do public world. Okay. Waypoint. Waypoint. But we don't have any waypoints. We're going to do this if we don't have any waypoints. Well, for now, let's take the, the spare angel. And grab the. Oh yeah, I'm doing great. Oh, sorry, I didn't. <laughs> I am uh, just thinking about stuff. Let's disable this for now. Active. Um, I'm doing great. I'm trying to work with the movable platforms. And now it shouldn't complain because we don't have the patrol component. So it's moving. It's through. And it's working with the enemies as well. So that is nice. Now I need to... Do... So the problem I'm having with enemies is that my waypoints are kinda hard-coded positions. And that is not optimal. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of good for a diving angel, but the spear angel is not. I'm not entirely sure how I would do that to get them to move on the... Well, the spare angel just moves left and right, so if we had an elevator, then it wouldn't be a problem. But if we had a platform moving left and right, it would be a problem with... And we would have to use a relative waypoint. That means that if we are on a mobile platform, we would need the waypoints relative. Or will, will I even have? For now, I'm not going to have uh, enemies on a horizontal moving platform. So with that, I would say we're done with movable platform. That is uh, good. It's way faster than I thought. But now we will go over to pressure plates. And we're going to make two types of pressure plates. Um, 2A would be uh, enable ones. 2B would be 
stand on to uh, activate. Activate once. I'm going to start with the activate ones. So as usual, I'm going to start with this in LDTK to create a new entity, which will be an interruptible. So we'll create a new one, uh, texture types. It's going to be of type uh, interactable and let's see how I would this will only this will have a an array of entities um, I think that is it. <laughs> Very pressure plates. I'm starting to have a little bit of um, there's too many objects here. If I just want to see. have it there uh, we could oops that is not what I wanted to do just alt alt control control shift no I don't want to sneeze just shift no how do you select you oh it's alt shift yeah okay um what is that what is over there and why oh it's diving patrol entity okay why could I select that okay single lay mode I wanted the movable platform to be able to uh, go up here just for fun that's oh, like oh yes okay okay we have a pressure plate um, I'm going to add that here, I think. It's going to be resizable in wood. And uh, what am I going to do with this to test? Um, spawn on trigger. Yes. Let's add a spawn on trigger. Interactable would be that one. Oh, yeah, the interactable would not have. Right, this one doesn't have the interactable, like that. It should just be values for this one, and it should be just a boat. Uh, if it's uh, what do I call them? Uh, let's do it once. show this and we should always show activate once so we know if we are uh, what type it is now we've spawned on trigger and uh, it's, that is wrong it's interactable to should be and then I'm just going to have a diving angel right there a couple of patrol points and then we'll add another one right here, so the pressure plate would be really bad to uh, to step on. I think entities to trigger. Add those two, and hopefully, it should be activated once. This will work when I get there. Um,
I think that's all I need to do in LDK. Let's go back to the unit editor and we'll refresh. And it should all pop in here. There we have it. Now I need to make a pressure plate. Pressure plate. Uh, add a that uh, model. And underneath that, I'm just going to make a cube as normal. Cube. Capsule. I must have missed it completely. Where? <laughs> uh, square. Why is that so often? No, it's not. It's the. Never mind. Uh, there we have it. The model. Oh, the whole thing will have a box collider 2D. And. No, yes, for now. And we'll have a, we'll make a pressure plate script. Think about room, room objects, and a pressure plate would be a room object. Pressure plate. We'll add that to the pressure plate. up because I like to have the scripts above the box colliders. So in the pressure plate this will be a state component. Um, and since this will have a single use uh, which we define in LDK I need to do LDK import fields and I'm going to add a bool which is single use. Activate once, I think I call it. Calls and uh, we will save as this to just save that. And in fields, uh, to it one will be field dot get goal uh, I think I called it activate one so let's check LDTK activate one so let's activate one and uh, if activate one do the thing uh, we trigger what we're actually doing. State component doesn't do much. We only set the state. Uh, we'll trigger. Not the state component I should be on. It's interactable component, right? No. Let's go to the door. We have a door, trigger base. It's trigger, it's state component. Uh, so trigger base, because the pressure plate is a trigger. Trigger event. So the trigger base itself will get. No, it will not get all the interactable components. Uh, we'll set all the interactable components and they will check if we are. It's not a trigger base. It is a state component. But interactable was. I'm confusing myself here. Let's go to lever. Uh, lever is interactable. Uh, that's where we toggleable component, which is an interactable component. And we do interact, that's the thing. And uh, trigger happens. And 
the enemy thing. Maybe it's a toggleable component that is. Right, I'm just using. <laughs> Using myself there. Alright, the lever is not interacted by it in the player interact. You need to interact the bulk component. We get the lever and or interactable components. Time for a good old debuzu. Alright. Cool, cool. Thank you for uh Watching. I assume you're uh, heading out. It should be your own this time. Not yet? Okay. Ten more minutes. Cool, cool. I appreciate the support. Oh, I was uh, confused. Yes, I am confused. It's an interactable component. That is what it is. <laughs> uh, I'm just, uh, I was too confused to understand your uh, So, the problem with having an interactable component is that we're not actually interacting with it that way, we're just stepping on it. So, it is going to be a state component. I am, I've decided it's a state component. And we have a trigger. Uh, we're overriding trigger. But we don't need to use trigger. State component. Uh, so this one would instead do a uh, on trigger enter 2D. If the collider would be a compare tag player, it's player's tag. Which we do. If activate once, we activate once is true. And state will be on. I think that's all I need to do in this one uh, for the activate once. I think activate once is a bad name for it though. We activated once. But if we're not activating it once, then it's going to be. And you have to stand on it to activate it. Uh, so. This is not how I should do it. Uh, activate once is. Uh, but the pool is active, it's false, uh, and that's what we're. So if we have active ones, we will uh, set is active. I think I'm going to have 
no, has been activated would be this one. It's active. So if we're activating it, uh, the activate once is the value from LDTK. So it will decide if this uh, pressure plate will be a. They just activate once and it's always activated. And uh, or if it's a, you have to stand on to have it activated. Like it will deactivate when you walk off it. So, after it once is a really bad name. I guess I would understand what it means, but it's still a bad name. Okay, uh, but let's go with this. Uh, Instead of having this, we'll do activate once. <laughs> once. Else. And we'll pressure this. <laughs> uh. Handle trigger. I, I can't think of something right now. Uh, yeah, this is the type of the pressure plate. It should probably not be a bull, it could be an enum, but it will still be two enums, so. But I think an enum would be better. Pressure plate state. Uh, not, it's also not state, uh, it's type. Uh, activate once would be a type, and the other type would be, what's a good name for it to be? It's just normal. Uh, but this will just be yeah but you need to do uh, stand on it to activate it uh, and if you walk off it going to deactivate what's a good name for that uh, stand on require pressure. Plate. I'm going with require pressure just so we know what uh, what it means. And I will change this from that to an enum uh, pressure plate type. The type default would no default value. Well, it needs to be one. Uh, cannot be null. Do it once. I got override it, but always show value only above. It. By pressure, I do it once. Good. Pressure play type. So I need to make this enum. Um, should have it in script somewhere. Uh, enums. Script. Enums. Plate. Type. Public. Enum. Must hold. Yeah. Must hold is good. Yeah. Once. Hold. 
just hold. Hold. Vision. Let's go with must hold. You must hold for the bull name. Uh, stream is cutting in and out. I'm sorry. Is it uh, is it Twitch? I think. The bull name. I am. Yeah, it's probably Twitch because I don't have any dropped frames. I have that on uh, a lot of other streams as well. It just. Also, if you want to save some bandwidth, uh... I would suggest you lower my quality to 720p. 60 FPS. Uh, if you have that issue, uh, I'm streaming at. Uh, I was just thinking bandwidth. Because I'm streaming at 6,000 uh, bitrate. If you watch it stream for, uh, for an hour, that's quite a lot. <laughs> I don't really need that much right now since I'm not playing games, but it just feels good to have a good full stream. But if you have a max limit on your uh, connection, cutting it off might be... I think I'm going with require pressure. Alright, Captain Coder. Uh, Thank you very much for hanging out, and we just got our 850th uh, follow. What up, Kessinak? Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And uh, yeah, thank you, Captain Coder, for uh, hanging out and uh, chatting. We'll see if I will be catching the end of your stream, or if uh, it's like usual, we end at the same time. <laughs> So we go with require pressure here, I think. Let's we'll save this and let's refresh it in Unity. Require pressure. I think that's uh, it's to inform me or the one making the level to what it is. Uh, clap, clap, clap. Thank you for all the claps. Uh, what about that? <laughs> so many claps. Type. If it's activate once, we do that. Else, it um, as if twig type is require pressure, then and the required pressure, I would say. Have a good, a uh, good stream, Mr. Coder. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, cool. <laughs> the activate once is just to set activate and toggle on, and that we only want to do that if uh, it's active is false. In this case, we activate it once, and we only change the state once. And here, though, we need to check if uh, trigger. We also need to do a on trigger exit, which will also trigger. No, this should uh, on trigger. <laughs> Is on trigger a word? Yeah. No? I don't know. Untrigger is the word now. It's comp 
planning. It's not a word. On trigger. Uh, what is the actual word for uh, the opposite of a uh, trigger? Uh, opposite of trigger. Dimmer? No, that's what is this? Prevent, avert, obviate, avoid, check, defend, block, stop, hinder, impede, halt, counter, inhibit, prohibit, obstruct, counteract, arrest, or hamper, ward off. Save off, defend against, herb restrain, restrict part. Perfect. No, it's going to be on trigger for now. That is a word. Uh, wire pressure. It will be different, I'm going to switch this in a bit. <laughs> Not trigger? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we could do like release trigger. Wouldn't that make sense? I think that would make more sense to have like release trigger. Because that's what's actually happening. <laughs> the trigger. Because we're walking off the trigger, so we're going to release it. I'm trigger sounds okay. Okay, um uh, what do we do here? When we trigger this we uh... Alright, here we just set pressurize, depressurize, yeah. Was it the state value to on? And here we just set it to off. But this is uh, if we're on this state. I don't think I just go with... I can't hit the correct keys. Uh, I think I go with the release trigger. But pressurize and depressurize was good. Make this a prefab now. See if we can find level room pressure plate. Keep state, yes. Um, and now we go to LDTK. Where do we have it? LDTK. And then we should have our pressure plate here. Apply this and could not find the value on um, was there an issue? Pressure plate type, you know, pressure plate type. Oh, did I not? Yeah, uh. That's not gonna work. We need to get Enum. Pressure plate type. And this will be a pressure plate type. And now it should work. I think. What up, Art? How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Glad to see you here. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Oh, 
all the nice people are here. Uh, one second, I'm trying to do a thing. There we go. Okay, okay. So uh, we just made a movable platform. So I should probably change my title to be something else. Uh, to be regular place. Having a good day so far. Been up for several minutes and the sun is shining. Yeah, the sun is shining here as well. It's a wonderful day. Uh, be streaming. <laughs> no, so we made. Uh, let's see if we can refresh this. This one, it's off. That's good. That's how it should be. If I play, I will show you what we have made. Uh, we have a. It's moving. so slow we made a movable platform i actually need to change it a you haven't seen those winged creatures before either no uh so let's grab it here uh let's take the waypoint do it like this okay i'm going to increase the speed to 15 uh then we are going to reload it we can see that it just works in here. We have a diving angel there. Uh, so I'm going to... Stand on this? No? So I think I need to change... Uh, this should be a mobile platform. And the lay needs to be ground. And then it would work. I'm glad I... Moved it. Okay, now it should work. <laughs> and now it should work when I create a new one in uh, in LDTK as well. No? Okay. What is this? This is ground. Oh, did I? Wow. That's an unlockable door. That's not what I wanted to grab. The movable platform. I want to open this because it doesn't have a collider. So let's do a uh, box collider. I think I added all of these in the scene, which would make it not work. Now this one should have a collider around it. Yes. Now we can start on it. <laughs> now, but what I did with the movable platforms are. When you stand on it, you have the speed, obviously. Uh, it's moving. True. So, you just move back and forth with it. If you jump, you have no... Like, you lose all the momentum. But if you, for example, when it goes to the right... Uh, if you hold right, you will keep the velocity. You can do... If there's a platform that... We need to do a long jump or something. Uh, you can do that. But if you let go of the direction when you jump, it will stop. So, yeah, I think this will be a very nice uh, thing to use. <laughs> you could do some secrets or something where you just have to jump really far or use the uh, this for a puzzle. It is in a few other games. Uh, it's usually not... You usually keep the momentum of the platform if you just jump in those games though. But we only keep the momentum if we hold the direction we're jumping. So you could turn around whenever you want. Or just stop. I think that is uh, kind of kinda cool. And now I'm working on pressure plates. I forgot to advertise myself on uh, in a Discord.
Okay, so what I made uh, now... Oh, I could get through there. Oh, well, I can get through, but didn't trigger the... Room exit. Okay, so I'm going to spawn in this room instead. Which room is that? It's room um, 5. Uh, Reaper Fellow doesn't have a name. I don't think so. However, the Reaper is a female. That's all I know. Uh, what I've done in this room, uh, room number 5, which is not working properly, uh, is... I have made a pressure plate. This one should be activate once. Activate once. So when we walk on this one, we can only like it's going to be activated forever. And I connected it to spawn on trigger, which should hopefully uh, spawn two enemies if everything works nicely. And this is the first time testing, so. on player trigger maybe yep it worked cool. <laughs> it worked. I just need to set it a pressure plate to be um, a player trigger and it should also be a trigger I think so but yeah, I don't think the Reaper has a name. Really. So this is how I want it to work. We push the... Uh... No, no. Okay, so cool. Uh, that is working. <laughs> now I want to uh, try it with a door. So this one worked, no problem at all. Let's remove those. I'm going to add a door. Uh, the door is going to open when you hit the when you stand on the switch. Uh, there it is on the pressure plate, and it's going to close when you walk off. Just make a door right here. This why not? Uh, and this one will activate on that. I think I should rename these to interactables, interactables that I have on all the other. Then I will have to go into here. We will. I will complain. Yeah. So let's go into the door of CS. And here I think now, lockable door. This should be interruptibles. Let's do a reload of all of this. Just to make sure. It's quick so it doesn't really matter if I reimport it. Now we should have the door right there. And hopefully, when I stand on the uh, trigger, it should open. Mm, I just realized I didn't change the type of the, for the trigger. This needs to be a required pressure. So if we actually grab the pressure plate now and refresh, this should change. Yeah, perfect. Now it requires pressure, so it needs us to be on the trigger all the time for it to work. Open. Let's see what the issue is. We have activate once. Release trigger would 
Cargo state off. Let's see if we get in here. Let's put a break on so we can see if we're actually getting in there or if it's uh if we're not. Classic Unity, freezing when you attach the debugger. Let's try again. No, okay. Uh, let's start over. Let's start play mode again, and then we attach the debugger. Let's attach this. Something is a bit off. But the unit is just um, frozen. I had this one time before and then I just had to wait like 15 20 seconds. See, we're on this now, it opens, and then we jump off, and it's at state 2 off. Okay, let's go to uh, unlockable door. I call it untrigger here. So, we should actually go get into close now, right? We do get into close. And the state is already closed, so... Is that when I open? Put it open, yes. Okay, let's. Uh, we're going to try and close this all the time. Nice. Uh, thing going on there. this we exit we put it to off so why is the player we don't get into close because But we do get in here. The door, the one listens to. Oh, that's just door. Trigger base has all of these and. It's because it's turning off and I'm not untriggering the event when we do. So what I'm going to do is the when if I lost um, has triggered. It's the ball. If I have triggered uh, by going in here, and if we toggle it off. Um, we untrigger it. This is the check, so I don't have to do check through all the interactables every time. Uh, when I untrigger something, I just want it to trigger what once. Like, yeah. So if uh, well, it's going to untrigger the event whenever I. Slightly optimized. I could have just run uh, the on trigger, but I think this will work. Trigger. 
Oh. Kinda. The uh, door number one is. Why do I have this one? These doors are going to change uh, soon at the end. I'm just testing it, but it did work. You could see the top door. Um, The top door is uh, closing. This should be a uh, minor one. <laughs> right. Yeah. So now I can trigger and uh, untrigger. and turn back to where they should be but that doesn't matter because doors are not going to look like this but we can see that our pressure plates are working just fine which is wonderful you have to stand on this for it to work and to see that the old one works as well we just need to get the where is it is that the wrong room yeah it's five pressure plate we can just activate once then when you jump off, it just activated. Quite pressure. Oh. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, I think okay. We did finish our task in uh, two hours. Thought the moving platform would take way longer. And now we are stuck with the uh, wonderful thing that Captain Coder was talking about. Coming up with things on the fly. Yeah, it's super nice because now we're not limited to just having jumps. So the first thing I implemented that helped a lot was the one-way platforms over here. Let's actually go to them. Um, so then you can build uh, yeah you can jump I didn't refresh you can jump through them from below and then you snap to them or land on them uh, that helped a lot with how you can build levels so you can jump through them like this but it also doesn't really doesn't require you to you don't your head doesn't bounce uh, like it does here yeah so now we can really start making puzzles so our Chris was the one suggesting the pressure plates and uh, the movable platforms so we can make puzzles the next thing I think I need is a something you can lift up and uh, put down <laughs> for the buttons. So you could lift up the box, put it on a button to open a door, for example. Uh, so you can get through. I think that was actually the next task. Let's check the list. Uh, this. Wrote a few things. So, mobile platforms, we've done it now. A switch that makes the platform move. Well, we can do that uh, by having the trigger things. But that is not a problem. I haven't, I think I tried that, so 
mechanic to trigger switch from afar. So that would be um, a projectile, but I'm not sure if I want to make a projectile for this now. You want to go out into the glorious sun, but you will lurk here for a while. You could say hello to Captain. All right, all right. Thank you for uh, for hanging out and for lurking and for uh, for chatting. I really appreciate it. And say hello to the captain from me as well. He is working on his uh, crafting system. So let's see where we had it. Okay. Uh, limited to carrying one item. So, lifting an object, I think, would be a huge thing to have. Um, so that is what I'm going to add next. Well, since we've been going for two hours, I'm going to take a few minutes break, stretch a little bit, uh, so I can go for a, for a few more hours. So I will be back in like five minutes. Maybe I should add a timer on screen with like five minutes whenever I take break. Notice I'll do that. Yep.
Alright. Let's do the next thing on our list. Which is to carry an object. So before I made it possible to throw objects, it was a long time ago, but I think I'm going to make it possible to just lift up a single object. Uh, it should not be a throwable object. Now I'm wondering if I should have any limitations on this, like with jumping. Like you can't jump as high if you are carrying uh, something. Could that be a thing? I don't know. But first, let's make a new component for the uh, for carrying stuff. No, let's actually make the thing we're carrying first. So I'm going to add a new object in LTTK. Slightly slower when moving, yeah. But should the jump height be affected? I wonder. So let's make a uh, liftable box, I guess. Uh, to be under the interactables. And I think that is it. I think the box will be a single tile as well. We'll have a liftable box. I actually want to spawn up here. Oh. This is nice to be up here and test things. We have the liftable box. That's all it could be. In uh, LDTK, I think. And here we're going to create a uh, liftable box. Oh, so I'm going to remove that one and the pressure plate. They are working, so I don't need them to test any. Oops, there. We refresh it. Just go up here. There we have it. Good. Can't move as fast. Already can't jump as long. Yeah. Jump height reduction might be too much of a handicap, true. Yeah, let's try with just lowering the horizontal speed a little bit. Uh, oh, did I make a liftable box right here? Make this a prefab to start off with. Level room going in there. And we are going to script and we are going to put it in the room object and call it liftable. <laughs> DKC soundtrack for carrying shop. It's a good timing, really good timing. Let's add this to the liftable object, a liftable box. Uh, and actually override this so we have it. Apply. I'm also going to, before we do anything else, I'm going to go to LDTK and add this one. I'm also going to make a underneath this model and uh, I'm going to put a box. Uh, it's square. Let's apply that. And let's go back to LDTK. Let's remove the liftable box and then to set it to the middle. Now we can place it again. And refresh here and we should have the pivot in the correct 
position. Object. I'm not sure how much we need to do with this. What I need, what I do know is that we probably need a rigid body on this. And we need a box collider. back into the captain code says hello back to me oh how cute thank you thank you <laughs> that is very nice uh okay so we have this uh object so what i want to do is when i walk up to it and press a button now should i be i should be able to stand on this as well right or no, liftable objects, maybe not. There would be other types of objects that I can push. Or... No... I don't know. Should you be able to stand on things you can lift up? I mean, it makes sense if you can stand on it. But the problem with standing on it should be that you can only stand on it while it's grounded. Then. Because if else you can jump, drop it, land on it and jump from it. I don't think I want that. That would be... that would be bad. Then you could probably glitch it so that you jump and you pick it up at the same time. The floating from the search, en search engine where you just spam the. Uh, well, you have an unlocked uh, mouse wheel and you just scroll it. And then you float. I need to think how I want it to be. First, I think we should. Should. Uh, should. Make it so we can just pick it up and put it down, and it will trigger pressure plates. I think that is the first step. So I don't think I need a rigid body to start off with. Hmm. I think it's all on the player. Let's make a new component, and that is going to be player lift object component. And that is going to be a special component for the player. It would be a player lift uh, component. Add it here. Player lift object component. Let's go into the script and inherit from entity uh, this script. In later stage, having objects to stand on to get to higher place could be used for stacking puzzles. Yes, I've been thinking about that as well. But we also need them to be. I think it will have different states on them. So when you jump and uh, put it down or maybe you can't let go it, yeah, you should be able to let go when you're jumping but while the object is falling you shouldn't be able to collide with it I think so when it's grounded or on top of any other object then you can land on it but not while it's falling does that make sense?
but they would also make Because now my head is thinking that, well, what if the we have somewhere where boxes are like bouncing on our spring? And you want to land on them. What I could do is that you can drop it in the air. And you can... land on it but if you pick something up you uh i don't really care if we have uh, okay so map design <laughs> but just having like springs uh with a box on the spring and it bounces up and down i think that would be a cool thing just to have. It's not really a puzzle, but it's a uh, like a platforming thing. But I have an idea, and that is, if you pick up an object, <laughs> no time having yeah, some block, yeah. And blocks your jumps. No, no invisible objects. No Kaiser blocks. No, no. We're not going that path. Uh, that would be cool. Like, I, I'm not sure where I want to take this game in the end. Like, maybe we could have a secret Kaiser level or room you get to after you beat the final boss or something but um, I'm just thinking how I want the box to work so let's now lift up the box and put the box box down now we can let go of box one letting go in the air then or maybe we should just embrace the jumps of the box so what I'm thinking is if you jump and let go of the box you will automatically stand on it like it will put underneath you so you stand on it However, you cannot pick up a box while you're jumping. So you could land on it, pick up the box, but then you would have to use your air jump. So you couldn't glitch. Like you can't jump and pick it up at the same time. Because when you pick it up, you will uh, have used, you, you're not grounded anymore. So you could probably, you could still glitch with the double jump. I could also, hmm. I could do so that when you put the box down and you stand on it, you don't get your double jumps back, or do you? Not if you pick it up again. I'm thinking. If you do a double jump, you uh, release the box. Then you're standing on it. So you could jump from here. And if you jump, then you have your uh, double jump because you're grounded. But if you pick up the box, then you wouldn't be grounded anymore. And we then have to keep track on if you used your double jump. That's going to be a mess. Or 
or maybe I'll just embrace that the people can break it. Like when you release a box when you're moving in there, it gets more speed than you, so you could probably dash and land on it and jump from it. I think the most important thing is that you can't jump and pick up the box at the same time, but you could pick up the box and double jump, I guess. Or maybe you just can't pick up a falling box. Because I don't see any reason why you would pick up a falling box unless we make some uh, janky puzzles. Does that make sense? I think not picking up a falling box solves a lot of uh, potential glitches and... Uh, but you can jump from it. Picking up falling objects could be used in boss fights. Okay, if we expand on this idea, I don't think if you jump and when you jump and release the box, it will be underneath you. You cannot pick up objects you stand on. Would that? Or do you want to pick up objects you stand on? Because it's so hard to not allow. Uh... I mean, if you allow to do all of this. Then it's so easy to um, glitch it. We could also make it so that you can't pick up a box that's falling that you released. Until it touches the ground or touch something else. So that would make it a limitation that... But that would be hard to convey to the player, I guess they would just have to learn and understand it. Not thinking right now, a movable platform would also be a potential box that's rolling or sliding. <laughs> I'm just thinking of a lot of ideas. Scope creep. <laughs> Not at all. So, uh, go in the air. We cannot re grab it. We can grab objects. Are in the air as long as we didn't uh, didn't throw them. I think that makes sense. That would be the the reason this is really important because then we can't have them uh, just let go of a box, land on it, grab it, and jump and keep going forever. You could still do a double jump, put it down, get onto it, uh, and grab it, double jump, yeah. Or use your air jump to get higher. I think this is... Yeah. Okay, so we can lift up the box, we can let go of the box. Let's go in there, we cannot re-grab it. We can grab objects that are in there as long as we didn't throw them. Yes. What else can we do with them? Um, 
we can stand on the box. We can walk through the box. Right? They shouldn't they should only be like they should be like one-way platforms. I think. Isn't that the best way? Okay, uh, that's all we need to know for now. We have entered script. Uh, we are going to add an info class for this, which would be lift info, a public class lift info. And here we will just have a public values change. Uh, Not a bowl will do a Game out comment? What is this? Comment to lock my finish. Okay, uh, game object. What are we grabbing? We're grabbing a liftable object. Uh, object. Oh, let's do a lift info. A new lift info, and we override our initialize. We do lift. Info a. Can just do info add info. Uh, lift info. This component will work kind of like the interactable the liftable object. Did I make that? component because here we're, go, we're looking for interactable component uh, but interactable components are not what we want in this way no we'll make a completely new type for this let's go boy uh, right then okay, execute no Okay. We'll start an update. So we need a new key to lift things up. Uh, so I kind of want to grab this. I don't want to do paste execute just so we have that. We need the frame input info. Input info. We need to get that data. Uh, get data. Oh, get data. Uh, I get data without input info. No. Oh, right. Never mind. I'm, I'm stupid. Okay. We got the frame input info. We'll use dash for trying. And we try lift object. Now I'm actually going to copy this. Because this is what we're going to do. It's X2D. Now let's import that. We need a position info of our soul. Uh clear interact component. No, we are it's in here. Private uh position info. Info, get data, position info. No, not position. Info. I've been thinking if I should do a stream where I do, um, 
work on my YouTube video because I'm picking up a new way of uh, working with it and learning more about DaVinci Code. Da, da Vinci Code? Da Vinci Resolve. Good. And uh, seeing, like working with the motion graphics for it. If that would be interesting to anyone, I'm not sure. Doing Da Vinci Code live on stream. Yes, exactly. Imagine. But it would be kind of easy to do. I would just have to watch the movie and then we'll solve it. Copy what he does. I lift object, we need interaction radius. I'm going to add a serialized field. It will be serialized field, target, float, and interaction radius. Set this to one. And the layers we're going to interact with, um, that's for later. And here I want to grab a liftable object. We'll then have a public void loop. Not sure what lift is going to do, but um, we're calling a lift on it. And the liftable object would then be um, lift info object value would be interactable. Ah, uh, it's the one object. Cool. Yes, that will be it. Ah, uh, this will be lift of all objects. Objects, okay. You will lift it, not sure what that does, but we set the liftable object. Um, so here we'll do if. Uh, lift info object value is not null. Else, instead of checking a null, we could do a Check null for now. Uh, throw lift. Throw lift double object. So the first thing I'm going to do with this is just just do a lift info object value is null. So I think liftable object um, I think we'll have a pull well, is lifted. Oh can I call it throw? Would that make no yeah. uh, false and when we are being lifted up I want to have a transform uh private transform active transform uh lifting transform and we'll do in update we'll do uh loop is lifted transform position would be lifting transform position for now. Else we should fall down to the ground here. Uh, 
I think. We lift it and we info object value. Go. Let's do this. Also, we add a debug log here so we know we get in here. Taking off. Oh, we just throw. Um, we're taking off and here. Uh, we set now. Because we're not taking off. So now we've added this component here. Uh, we need to make a prefab out of this. Let's go to the prefabs. And it's a player specific one. So let's add it there. Player lift object component and we also need to put it on the on the player. Then we can override this. Why not? And the player main might have to just be refresh like that. Okay, okay, and let's try this. Now, which button is my dash button? I don't know. Shift. Oh, that is play skill, so nothing is happening when I'm trying to dash. So, uh, let's... Let's see if we actually get in here. Let's put dash. Is that the dash button? I don't know which. Could it be that mm, I didn't set it to active? Uh, there we go. So. Do we have an object? Well, it should be null. So... Me. Do that again. Uh, let's enable this from the start. So for some reason. Oh. It is no. If we don't have an object, then we should try to lift an object. And we're setting the value to null. Yes. Go ahead. Nothing. Let's attach this and. Lift object, but we didn't pick that one. Uh, oops. The liftable object is colliding with five objects, and none is the one we want to collide with. Why is that? Uh, this should be in Moonmania, room zero. 
the liftable box. Hmm. I add a box collider to this one? I guess not. Weird. Very uh, weird. Let's try again. Here we go. Now we should have the well liftable box. Cool. We're not setting the lifting transform. That is right. We are not. But we're sad now, so that's good. Transform, transform to follow, and the lifting transform would be set to here. I did. Wee. <laughs> now is that the uh, the transform of play lift object component is really fun. When we reset it, we should pick it up. We got the object. We can put it down and pick it up again. Oh. So now I want to make this a one-way platform. Did I make a script for the one-way platform? I didn't, right? No. So the only thing that would be a one-way platform. And that is kind of what it's going to... But these are not going to be one-way platforms. We need another layer which will be... the liftable object and uh, go to the prefab and set the layer to liftable object. Change all. Then we need to go into the collision script again. That collision shit. And I think we are setting the layer here. Yes. Liftable object, that's what I call them. Object. I might have to fix my uh, collision now because I think I'm going to clip up on top of this. If I walk, yeah. So if we check our collision, uh, I think the is it the red line that are. And I think they're going quite far, they're going from like up here. Even if the liftable object was the uh, sprite, if we move this up here, I wanna see. Yeah, we're interacting with it. So if we move this down a little bit. We would get up on it. Oh, 
how do we solve this? We'll go into the collision effect. Component. I'm already in there. So the collision distance. I've been thinking about this for a while. I do two types of collision. One, here is my move distance. Don't I do two? The ground collision. Now I only do... Oh, I kind of optimized it to only be one. That's good. I was thinking about that uh, yesterday if I would have to rework this a little bit. But I don't think I have to. I'm thinking that uh, currently I take we do this from the middle of the player fixed start position uh, which is the previous position Y previous position Y is always going to be uh, the previous position of the player which is in the middle of the player So I'm going to try something here and do just like minus point uh, three F. And this is to check that uh, if it would work with my calculations. We would have to change the move distance as well because now I probably. You know, now we have the same. Uh, working the same as. What are the red lines? I don't know. That's the start position. And the distance would then be... Move distance would be minus 0.3 as well. We could kind of do... That. I think I can not reload world. Uh, I wanted to do fast script reload and force reload. Now, if we move the liftable box up two steps, we probably wouldn't collide with it. So that's good. What is the green one following me? I don't know. Uh, now, would still do there. So it would be. Uh, the. Actually, the uh, player size dot y times 0 0.5f plus 0 0.05f. We don't want to be on the ground. We want it to have a little bit of a uh, leeway. And then we would have to set that here as well. Minus this. Let's try that and see what happens. I think the problem is the whole cube is the collider. Yeah. It's not enough. Uh... Now we're running into a lot of other issues that are, since this is built uh, in a way where that collision would work. Uh, I think the problem now is that it's the gray one, the we do this minus zero point twenty five. I want to see.
how this looks. Yeah, can't be at vertical position. I want to see what we do here. Draw line red. Do we have any on Gizmo in here? Or Gizmo. That in the player. Gizmo. Start position, object. Oh, that's object size. So it doesn't really work. I can't jump now and I'm snapping down to these. That is because the start position is really far down. Now we have it here. And Y would be object size. That's the player size, yeah. Let's do this for now. And the object size. Script reload. Force reload. Then it should look. That is the collision now. But we are snapping down. I didn't want to be the collision, but I might have to. doesn't matter at all. That is the problem. What up, Yummy? Yummy? Yummy. What's the uh, good, good uh, the correct pronunciation? Pronunciation. Oh. Yummy. I'm doing wonderful. Uh, how are you doing? Are you doing well? Jam me? Yeah. Welcome, welcome. Uh, glad to see you here. I am currently uh, you on a jam. I'm not on a jam. I'm in a jam. No. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how I would solve my <laughs> my calculation for the Collision. We do plus here. So I'm. Um, I've recently created uh, movable platforms and uh, pressure plates that you stand on the trigger stuff, and now I'm making liftable uh, boxes. The problem is that my collision is not working properly with this um, my ground collision. But this might actually work. If we do this, this four or times four, maybe. Uh, the reason why it wasn't working is that I was snapping on top of the uh, the box you can see here. In this collision, and you're supposed to be able to lift this box, and you're supposed to be able to stand on the box. I'm using Unity. I'm using box casts in Unity, so I'm not using the their system at all. That is a problem. That is clearly not how it should work. 25 is too much. Or maybe. If I make this 0.5 again, let's try that. Uh, <laughs> so I'm doing box casts to calculate the uh, collisions and stuff myself. I'm not using the rigid bodies uh, to do anything. And that is so I can have the behavior I want. Uh, there's a lot of... 
kind of interesting that I'm clipping through it right, like this now, uh, right now. <laughs> so I'm thinking. That one already does that, so what if you've done it for the first time last week using rooted bodies? Got so much inspiration from Celeste. Oh, yeah, Celeste is a wonderful game. Uh, their movement code, though, is like a million lines long. Can't jump and So let's uh, actually think this through. The bird copying some features from the movement controller. I just uh, I threw it real quickly uh, and looked at it uh, when it was released. I haven't really put much uh, thought into it. One probably should. <laughs> you can now jump running coyote jumps and jumps. Uh, I can as well. I should. Uh... Let me think this through. What are we doing here? So, for the player, I want to have a. We're walking on the ground, so if I put this back to how it was before. I think it was just like this, right? This is not my old behavior. <laughs> what did I have in here? It was... Like this. Uh, yeah, moving in Celeste is really good. And I am trying to recreate something similar myself. Without having a thousand lines of movement code. So this is what I had before. The problem is when you walk here, uh, the collision is made from like from the middle and then we go down. So when I walk to the right, I collide with a liftable box and I get pushed uh, on top of it. But we can also... not where did I go there I am I'm falling okay um, I just <laughs> well I was lift off or taking off I even uh, debug logged it I picked up the box and the since I can land on the box it was kind of colliding with it and moving it up because I move the liftable box to my transform and then I stand on it and then I move my body to the trans... No. So they just kind of kept moving up. So how would I solve this? Yeah, they got on loop together. Hmm. Love the singularity. <laughs> Indeed. So I need to really think about this. 
we're walking here, the only thing we care about is the ground. Back to drop calculation. Doing different calculation. This is the move, this normal one where we. So this will do a box cast uh, from our start position, which will be the previous play position. If we're falling, we do this. But the starting position is what I need to change. So the starting position needs to be, let's, if we move it down 0.3, that also means that we need to make it 0.3 uh, shorter. Minus equal to 3F. That would give us a shorter distance we're moving. And since we're always doing player size, uh, y times 0.5 f 0.3 wouldn't be a problem. Still clip up on this. I'm actually going to comment out the uh, ceiling collision for now. The reason I do this is then the only red line should be also, why do we stay up in the air when I when I pause? Reload this and uh, let's see, scene. We still have two red lines. Why do we have two red lines? Or, or is that just the. a really long line? I don't know. Uh, can I add back the. Yeah, it's uh, really... I haven't uh, seen that before. No context actions, no. I need to add back the uh, usages and stuff. We can still do this though. Using two, yeah, for ceiling collision. But we commented out ceiling collision, so that's not happening. So the only time we're drawing a red line Calculate vertical collision. Wait, 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 wait. Calculate collision based on. Oh, okay, that's how I do it. Right. Let's go back into this one. Let's change the color to blue. <laughs> Package manager, uh, force, reload, force reload. Now it's blue. So the whole line is blue, and this is my. That can't be right. Oh no, this is the. It normal. It's not the line, the collision line. Let's move that out there instead. There we have the collision line.
that makes sense. Because now if we walk, this one will be above. There. And I'm thinking... The lift all box has a full collision. But I don't need the animator. I was thinking... Since this, we are only going to stand on top of it. We don't really care about the collision at the bottom. We only care about the collision at the top. So it could be really small. Then uh, 45, I guess, would be no, 0.5. No, 0.475 would be at the top. We probably even make this 0.1. Uh, 0.95. Because now I shouldn't clip it or get up on it. And I would I should do the same. Because because of how my collision works, I don't need a collider. Uh, if you were to make a game based on Unity's colliders with rigid bodies and stuff, you would easily clip through a small collider like this one. But what I'm doing is I take your previous position and I do a box cast down from your previous position to your new position. And with that, you will never clip through anything. Because there will always be a... Uh, a line going from your previous position where you had or didn't have collision to your new position which will always hit everything. So for a rigid body for example, since you say you didn't know, if your rigid body moves really quick, so let's make a new game object, let's make a new uh, sprite and make this a square. Let's make this uh, more like this so it's easier to Visualize. So if you on one fixed update is here, and the next fixed update you check collision, you're down here. You do not have collision, you'd never collided with the small collider here. And you would just clip through it. If you had that much speed to move that much in a single frame or in a single physics update, which is kinda easy when you Fall speed, then you wouldn't get the collision because it only checks if you're colliding with something, so you can't have tiny colliders with uh, rigid bodies. It all depends on your speed, but usually, really small colliders are bad. I have an example for a game, it's also made in Unity. Let me actually check in an old clip of mine. <laughs> I saved tons of hours future you, yeah. Um, let me see if I can find the video. Should have the should be a highlight. Uh, I think this one. So this, let's go to the screen. Um, this game is physical base, a bit predictive collision, not really predictive at all. I'm just doing a line from where you were to your, I'll, I'll explain it more in detail in a bit. So this uses physics to move you around. Um, so here I gain ridiculous speed and you can see in the beginning, uh, I get stuck on these walls because I collide with them. And when I get enough speed, by your momentum increases quite a lot. And here I clip through both walls because I have so much speed. So I go through the walls uh, immediately. 
the what I've built is um, what I'm doing with the player is that I'm not moving the transform position until I've done all the movement calculations. So this is a bit too complex really what I've made for the player. But you see I have all of these um, components right there. Very nice footage there. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so I built all of these components. They are working independently of each other, kind of. Some are dependent on others, but they have a priority when they will be run. But if you check, for example, my uh, do horizontal movement. In here I have position info, which is just data. So this is the new the position I'm working with, and I'm changing. Uh, position in the end and then I'm setting the value of position to my new position and I run them in order of how they are prioritized and the final one is finalize uh, movement which where I set the transform position so the collision check is using my not using the transform position it's using uh, the previous collision so if I move to the right then we're using the position I am in at that moment to calculate where I should uh, draw the line from. So if I moved... Let's take this one as an example. Let's make it smaller just because we can. So we have this one. So if I start over here, let's make a new one to uh, visualize this. Uh, let's actually put that into the origin let's say I start over here so my horizontal script might move me over here then I have gravity that's pulling me down a little bit uh, and then I might have a jump that would put me up a little bit I might also have velocity from a, a movable platform that would also put me to the side a little bit and a lot of things can work together and then I would check ground collision would be I need to check so I don't uh, I take the previous position let's see so I did this correct uh, I take the previous position and change the Y position Yeah, so I, for the ground, I just check uh, your previous position plus a little bit of uh, calculations. So you always kind of check that I'm on the ground. When I, you, you find the next position, you do a bunch of stuff afterwards. You finalize everything, set the new position after all components have been run in a specific order. It is quite hard to manage. Uh, it, it's not. It do, it's not as hard as it sounds. It's only the few things that need to be in the correct order. So the uh, collision, for example, I have 50 because the collision needs to be done last. Because I need to move the player around and do everything before I do the collision. Because yeah, a lot of times when you do collision on your transform position, the collision will be handled before some of the movement. And then you will get like a jittery movement because you're walking into the wall and then you get pushed out of the wall. But after being pushed out of the wall from the collision, you still move a little bit and uh, such. That is why I force the collision to be in the end. And I do the same with the horizontal movement. And the, uh, the uh, ceiling. Yeah, I just set collision to a collision shake to a high number 50. And then I have my uh, entity, what do I call it? Finalized movement is set to a thousand because finalized movement will always, always be last. 
yes, you calculate everything you're expected to move and then I correct it with collision so you don't get any weird behavior from the collision. All, and you will never see, like, if you collide and it's moved out, that happens before we're uh, rendering always. Uh, You're welcome, Jamie. It's a thing I have uh, figured out over the years to how to do it. Uh, the whole structure I have with different components doing different things, uh, this is not needed. Uh, it's uh, just a way I wanted to try. But I'm not going to use this in the future pro in future projects. It's too many components um, to keep track of, and then you need to know all the names of the components to just find it, and it's a bit a bit tricky. I could have built it better. What up, Wumi? How are you doing? Uh, game is coming along really nicely. I am working on. Uh, I can show you the uh, the two new things I've done today. Let's go into here and move the spawn point down here. Uh, I could make a component that bundles uh, child components to manage priority. Yes, that's what I've been thinking. Because if you check, I have a mana component and a health component. They are not really... They would almost always go together. Uh, I have melee attack, I have a lot of different things. I could make an initializer which, uh, or a base one for moving entities that has collision shake, it has uh, entity initializer, horizontal movement and yeah. The priority system is for how I move my player around before I set the position. <laughs> I just went through it. Uh, so basically, my whole system is not moving the transform. To, uh, I'm moving a position, a uh, vector 3, basically. So I just, instead of moving the transform, I'm moving a vector 3 around, depending on the priority here. So each script gets the position, and uh, or if it needs to, changes the position. And then when all my scripts have uh, gone through, then I have my finalized movement, which takes the transform and sets the position. That way I can get the collision check to be last and um, check the collision and move the player and then I finalize the movement. Let's see what the uh, Scorpio is ready. It's kind of possible to make an in editor setup for certain components set up in unit, I'm pretty sure. So you have a certain setup for movement, which would be several calculation components and a collision component. You can bake it into an editor button. And recut. Yeah. No, uh, so I kind of started working on a tool for this. I have my entity editor. It's not very good right now, but it gives me a little bit better track of what I have. Uh, this one has basically everything. But then I have all the components that I haven't added in a list here. I was going to make this better. As you can see, these are all the components on the player. And then I also have <laughs> this many extra components. So it's a lot of components. And I would have to structure these better. But yeah, as you're saying, the, uh, the movement setup would be good. I can also handle the components from in here. So if we take uh, the sick dash, for example, it's that one. Here you can see dash 5, priority 5. We'll set it to 10 just for an example. And then we go grab the player, we have dash here, it's 10. Then we can set it back to 5. And if we go to dash, you can see it's high. I'm supposed to. My goal was to handle it from here, but I need to make it better. You mean if you add behavior bundles, bundle of components with default values and correct priority, that would boost your older. Yes, exactly. I just haven't gotten to that part because it's. Uh, I want to make new features. <laughs> so I started making this tool, which would do help uh, 
maybe not bundle things together, but make it easier to work with. But yes, bundle behaviors or bundle components would make it a lot easier to keep track of. That is the main uh, uh, problem I'm having. So I could, for example, group all the player-specific components together. Would it be too much to ask you how do you go through running the components with correct priority? I could, uh, I could show that. First though, I want to show Wumi what I've done today. And um, let's actually see if I can set this up without a problem. So I'm running LDTK here, a level designer toolkit, where it's a really good tool for both uh, top-down and side-scroller games and uh, metroidvanias. So I can set up all my rooms and set entities uh, in it. So I always make my objects in here first, like the movable platform. Uh, so I can check my, I set my checkpoints here, where it's going to move between, where it's going to start. And I have my waypoints. I could add another waypoint if I wanted to have it, like going several. Uh... Anyways, this is a movable platform. It's not triggered from the start. So I could add a pressure plate that I just made. The pressure plate would be, we can have it activated once. So when I step on this, um, nothing is going to happen. But then I have a, it's called spawn on trigger, that's not what it should be. But this one will be, uh, not that it's trigger, interactables would be this one. So this will automatically map to the pressure plate and that will trigger this object. So I've set up a system around this uh, so hopefully this will work. I'm not sure if movable platform is done with uh, work with that. So now I just save this and then when I go into Unity and refresh you can see that these will automatically pop up here. You feel like you're doing everything wrong? Well, I was too, until I I started working with uh, Tile, and that was a bit complex. But now I started, with, then I found LDTK and was like, yeah, I give it a shot. And um, it just works. <laughs> but tools are super important and behaviors, uh, how they work together. So let's start this. It's taking a really long time to start. That is weird. Anyways, um, oh, it's the movable. Oh, that's hidden by default then. Would that? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, it just shows it. I don't have a way of enabling it that way. But I do have my console. It's moving. Ooh. Now we have it. It has a lot of speed. I just wanted to show it so you can stand on it. The pressure plate you just stand on and it will activate. Uh, I can also set the pressure plate to be... Where is it? Uh, there we have it. Uh, activate once. It could be required pressure. So when you're on it... Oh, it doesn't work with the... But you can see the uh, value on, off, on, off. So anyways. Then I have a movable platform. So when you're on this, uh, you get the speed. You can jump and you will not have speed. Uh, if you jump with it, this is inspired by a Celeste a little bit. Uh, if you jump at, in the same direction and keep holding it, you will gain the speed. And this was very easy to do when you've split up, uh, not handling the transform position, but you're just handling the position. So you have one script that just handles the movable platform stuff. So I get the velocity until I collide with something. But you can also, even if you have speed, then if you stop, you just stop the momentum completely. So you, it's like a normal movable platform, but if you have, if you uh, 
move and jump at in the same direction as the moving platform, then you get the speed from it. So that's kind of what I've done today. Okay, so the component system that I've built is a bit complex. A bit too complex, kind of. So here you have all my components. Uh, do I need? It's called player main. I have a similar one that's entity main for any other entities. This is special for the player. It's not much, it's just a few listeners and stuff. Let's go to the entity main. Uh, so I've not built this to be readable, just so you know, for anyone else than me, but me. I have a list of my entity script. Each script, uh, each component in my list, let's take dash for example, inherits from uh, entity script which has a uh, priority, uh, is active, a few things linked to the entity main. Then we have a lot of uh, virtual methods you can override. Uh, just a lot of them. So each script uh, then has, in Dash for example, you can initialize and they will be run in a different order. Get data for getting data from other components. I'm just going through this real quick, uh, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. Uh, so in Awake, I run the set base values, initialize, then in Start, I do update, get, get data, and setup. And then uh, on Enable, I will do end of first frame check. That is, if you want things to load the first frame before, then I have first frame check. Then in Update, I just look through all the scripts that are active and run the execute. Uh, then I have a reset setup on destroy does a few things and on valid it just gets all the child components right now that has the type entity script and adds them to the list. So if I made a bundle the uh, bundle would then uh, not get the entity script but get the bundle and add that to the list instead. Uh, and then the last thing, the thing I'm going to use in every project from now on is uh, Entity Info. Not Entity Info? Yes, Entity Info. So, each of my class, let's go to the Entity Dash component. In each class that needs data, like Dash, I have Dash Info. So, Entity dash component is owning dash info, but any other classes uh, can get it. So what I do is in startup, uh, I do I initialize this the new dash info and I add data. The add data is the the I entity info here is the um, what binds everything together and it's ridiculously good in my opinion so add data the add data is this entity info which adds the data to a dictionary and uh, so this is added to the entity main so we have the uh, entity info in the entity main and to the dictionary we add the data so any class could then use uh, Add data to add the data, but also get data. Uh, and since it's using generics, I can add any type. So it just as long as it's a class, I just add it here and I can get it from other. So if we check entity dash component, you can see that I add the dash in. Oh, let's go to the entity initializer instead. It is just easier, one, easier to show. Here we have position info, which is this class that just handles the base position and this is the position I use all over uh, and position info here in initialize I add this uh, add data here position info and then if we go to dash component you can see I'm added a uh, member variable of position info and in my get data I can just info get data now I have a reference to my uh, position info 
So I only did it once. We'll get the days run a few times, so time, yeah. But you only need to do this once because you have a reference to this. And then I can use the position info in my execute down here to just do things. So yeah, whenever I make a new component, like I did with uh, Entity Moving Platform Component, this one I made today, I get, I initialize the, uh, this data that I'm not using now, I just realized, I'm not sure I need it, but I get the position info, collision info, and entity movement input info. This is just keeping track of if I'm holding X, Y, and uh, yeah, it's not built for others to be readable really, but it's kind of it's really easy to use. If I find any problems with the system, the problems I found is when you are when things need to interact with each other. So, for example, if you dash. I need to can if if I jump when I dash, before the dash is done, I need to cancel the dash. And what I could do, and what I should have done, is to add uh, something to the info that said like uh, public values changed. Just a bold uh, cancel dash because. It's hard to cancel something uh, from jump script. So in jump component, uh, play jump, I think I call it, entity jump. Here we have dash, here we get the dash info. And uh, where I dash ended early event. So here I'm using my <laughs> custom events uh, in scriptable object for this, uh, which I just dash ended early. And uh, then this one, since I only the player can dash and jump with this. So I'll listen to the uh, uh, dash done event. No? Uh, dash ended early? No? Maybe I'm not. Am I doing I can't remember anymore. Maybe I'm... Oh, Dash is listening to Jump, I think. <laughs> it's a mess. And that is something I would have to improve a bit in the future to use something similar like this. Yeah, I'm using uh, an ECS, ECS uh, type system for my game. Uh, each component handles its own behavior, pretty much. And this is the play component, uh, quite a lot of them. And even the... Uh, if we go into the room, let's grab this diving angel, also has uh, a component. So a lot of them are reused, like here we have collision check, we have entity died, entity data component, initializer, facing direction, finalized movement, gravity... Uh, a lot of them are reused for different entities. <laughs> did the clap hat work, by the way? What up, Rave? Uh, I, I, I didn't look. I hope it did. It sometimes just stopped working. It did. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, so I have, yeah, it's an ECS type system. So. Setting up all of these systems together are kind of really important. And LDTK is super easy to work with. Each new entity in LDTK, like a mobile platform that I made, you don't need to have my complex system. You just go to um, the imported one. And here you have a uh, movable platform and you drag a prefab. So whenever this is imported to your project, then it's going to populate this uh, object with the prefab or switch it out. Or... All right, uh, Jamie, thank you very much for the questions and for, uh, for hanging out. 
uh, yeah, lots of cool stuff. <laughs> How can you leave? I'm gonna I'm gonna make it easy for you because I need to take a small break. I've been going for four hours now, and I need to stretch a little bit so I can continue for at least one more hour. And we're going to work on the liftable box. So uh, I'm going to take a small break here, and I will be back in a few minutes, max five minutes, and uh, I hope I'll see you all soon.
All right, all right. Let's see what we can do with this. We have the liftable box. I think I need to. Right, it was something I wanted to do. Um, so I changed the collision a little bit, uh, so it's not as long as what it was before. Welcome message on, uh, on Discord is not working anymore. I'm not sure why. And that's what I was checking. Um, did I change that? Oh, no, it should work. Oh well. Made a deal with your girlfriend, gonna be eating a bit later today. What kind of deal is that? What do you like? What part of it made it a deal? <laughs> I'm just wondering, you don't have to, to answer that. <laughs> Yeah, so what I was thinking here, we have the new boxes I want to lift. <laughs> he just told her we're gonna eat later and he was like, okay, yeah, that's a good deal. <laughs> I should remove those two small boxes that I made there. Uh, so now I can walk onto this and jump onto this. We still have this little... You can... Um, You can uh, get back onto it when you start falling. I think that's fine though, isn't it? I think that would be fine. For now at least. But <laughs> the thing I wanted to do is the... Uh, did I save that to the liftable object? That is the question. I did not. Oh, so that's copy component. Base component value. Now we have the collision up here. A tiny, tiny collision. I could make it smaller if I wanted to, but there is no need to. Then we have the one-way platforms. Where I want to do the same. This one has a... Box Collider on here, uh, which should also be 0 0.05 ish. One. Oops. 0 0.01. Because only the top is what we're caring about. Um, 9. 5. Uh, 4. 9. 9. That's it, right? Yeah. It should be half of 0 0.01. So this is correct. Good. Now I think I should have fixed that should fix the snapping on the one-way platforms as well. So let's go back to the liftable box. The liftable box has um, a collider that we can stand on when it's uh, down. So I need to disable the box collider. Um. Hmm. So I wrote down what I wanted to do with this. Um. <laughs> it's uh, uh, uh. what I had. It was in the, in the lift, playlist of the component. 
So we can lift the, up the box, we can let go of the box. Those two are pretty much done. While letting go of the box in the air, we cannot re-wrap it. But this one is kind of important because we are going to be able to jump on boxes in the air. But if we are letting go, I'm not going to allow things like be jumping up, double jumping, landing on the box, picking the box up, doing another air jump, and uh, putting the box down and keep doing that. Uh, so we need a way so we can't re-grab it. So that means we need a check here. Um, Ooh, uh, player, let's go. If we throw it, uh, player, let's go, it's true. So this will be reset, uh, reset on ground collision. When we get the ground collision working. And when we lift up the box, we need to change the um, box collider. We need to set the box collider uh, enabled false. And when we throw it, we set it to true. Because while we're holding it, we shouldn't be able to um, collide with anything on it. And since that's something we need to get, I'll get that in our wake for now and the component box collider 2D. So with that I think we can pick up the box and uh, put the box down and stand on it. We do not have any type of gravity on the box. I need to I think I need to add a rigid body to it. Now I can pick this up, I can jump around with it, and I can put it there. And then I can stand on it, I can pick it up. But the player let go, so this, I need to set this to true. That the uh, throw uh, player let go is true. And here is what we need to do. Liftable object. If liftable ob liftable object. Uh, let's make this public cool and make it a property. Private set. So um, player let go. Name it as well. If it's public. If that happens, then uh, we need to continue because we cannot grab this when the player let go. Let's try that. That means if when I let go of it now, uh, we should be able to jump on it but not grab it. Stand on it, we can grab it, we can put it down, but now we can't grab it again. So that is correct. Um, wait, right, right, we're sad now because we're uh, letting go of the box. Uh, so these two are working properly. So we, I think we have all the data we need here. I want to move this up since it's a public property. So now we need a rigid body. On this one. Let's go into the prefab and add the rigid body 2D. It's going to have... Mm -hmm. I think this is good. So... I think what I have to do when I pick it up is to have the set it to simulated false because we don't want to simulate it while we're carrying it. So let's add the rigid body to there by 2D. Let's get that as well. Oh, 
Oh, you think would you really bother to the uh, simulator it's false? Can we do it? Yes. Never no, simulated here. True. And I need to check in my project settings, my physics 2D, that liftable object should collide with uh, the ground. And it should also collide with one-way platforms. Yes. Uh oh, um... Now when I let go of the box, it should hopefully... First, when I pick it up, it shouldn't be a problem, I hope. And it should be on the ground. Because I only have the tiny collision up here, so of course it's gonna fall down until it stands on that. Um, what I need to do is, what I'm going to try and do is make a collision, a, and underneath this I'm going to add a round collision. And this one will have a box collider 2D as well. And this one is not going to be type liftable object, it's going to be it could be default. It doesn't really matter. The player will not collide with it, but it will collide with the ground. So liftable object will that and I think this should work no okay it doesn't work if it's because we have a box collider on here so I probably need to If I paste this as new, have the box collider there. Let's remove that collision from here. Still not colliding. This one should be. Basically, ground collision is default. And it's this. It's not ground, so why didn't it? Was it? Oh, it's a uh, default should collide with ground. That's what. Uh, what it should be. There we go. And it's still behaving as it did before for me. The only problem now is I can't lift it up because we can't get the script. So I think I can... Let's see if I disable this one and put it back on here to make it uh, or maybe I should let's put it back here uh, re revert this one just to make it easy for me ok 
case that doesn't work because then what up please skin welcome welcome sir or ma'am ma'am welcome to the stream uh thank you very much for the follow and uh i'll hope you uh for enjoying me uh, seeing me struggle the grand collision is going back here i think we are going to do a liftable object here because it doesn't really ma have to be on here to be honest uh, uh, so mm. a liftable object here the only thing we need to do then is to change these two. The box collider will be the same, but the rigid body will not. So I'm going to serialize this field. Sorry, but you had to share everything I showed you to uh, your friend. Well, I'm not sure I'm uh, I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm streaming to be very, very uh, private, you know? <laughs> it's all right. It's fine. The more the uh, merrier. Uh, so we have the rigid body there and I need to I want to add all of this whole thing to this object so I'm going to copy and paste it in here we have the collision these two should be in here uh, we can now remove that box collider and the liftable object here and the liftable this is a problem though, the liftable object would be on the ground collision, so I don't really like that. So let's actually remove it from there and put it back onto the main script, or main object. And with this, I don't really need the rigid body on here. I kind of need to put... Uh, well, I would like to have the... Uh, have it here, rigid body 2D, because collision and rigid body. But what I want to do is I want to make a helper script for this. Um, we need that. Yeah, we are colliding with the trigger, so the trigger is going to be. No, I can't do that. Hmm. How do I want to do this in a good way? I want a liftable object to be here, but I want to... I guess the easiest way. Let's go with easy to just make some progress right now. Uh, let's add it here. But how is my, when I do this physics overlap, can we get the object we did attach rigid body? We can. And then we just do attach rigid body to get the liftable object. Yeah. That's the easiest way to do it. But then the rigid body wouldn't need to be. <laughs> a CLS field anymore since we moved it back. Good. Doing a lot of unnecessary stuff. <laughs> it's all good. Now I just want to revert this one. Um, revert. Good. And we remove this added collision and then we have this one done. Perfect. Fine. Good. To remove these two eyes. <laughs> okay. Let's try again. Okay. 
can go here. can stand on it. I can pick it up. Okay, we don't have a... Uh, so much speed. Uh, all right, we... It's the box collider we need to have a say that's field on. That we need to disable. And the box collider would be the player... Let's rename it to player collider. how this works now. I didn't... <laughs> not yet, not yet. We get the liftable box, uh, we open this because we need to set the box collider which would be the player collision. That is one, right? Player collider? Yes. Now I can play. Can jump on it, can pick it up, but we're still. Why? Oh, I'm still. Do hmm. This is. Uh, I was going to say this is unlike me to just uh, forgetting about things trying and trying but then I realize I do it at the end of streams almost always uh, I need to refresh as well okay now we can probably test it <laughs> Put it down. I stand on it. We cannot pick it up again. Oh, uh, what we collide with might not have a rigid body. Uh, RB two D would be a okay, attached rigid body. This one here, though, oh, that's wrong. It's there. I have them. And now I want to. Now we want to do a one on collision enter, which would. Enter 2D. This would be if when we hit the ground, uh, the bug log oh, name, library name, log error. Why does it always want to log error? I don't know. I want to see. when we collide with the ground, because then we're allowing the player to pick it up again. I want to see if it collides with something other than the ground.
we will not collide with anything. A collision to 2D collision. Does this on the... I thought on collision enter would trigger on the rigid body. I always... I'm trouble with this. I could probably... What up, Tani? Welcome, welcome. <laughs> hi, hi. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing fine. Great, wonderful. I'm trying to lift up boxes and it's not going as I wanted to. Moon Man, I am doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you very much for the follow, uh, Kasinokio. I hope you're doing fine as well. Uh, welcome, welcome. I am doing wonderful. I'm trying to pick up boxes. I've made a bit of progress. I don't think I updated what I'm doing today to. Uh, boxes okay, so there we go I updated the uh, the ticker with what I'm doing <laughs> okay, so it's not triggering that I could put a okay let's uh, let's create a new script a miscellaneous one which would be uh, forward and the, all this will do is do a will have a solar field which will be of type uh, it will be a unit event unit event uh, on collision on collision to and the 2d and then we'll just do a on collision enter 2D. Let's we go. We get the collider. And then we'll just do on collision enter invoke. Uh, this would be a collision 2D. And we'll just invoke that. We need a question mark there, maybe, so we can uh, make sure that it's not null. I'm not sure if it would be null, but we'll, uh, we'll do that. So with this, we could add it to our ground collision. Um, forward collision. And we would just add a new um, this liftable object. I think it has to load a bit. And it's runtime and liftable box. What I think I can do. Uh, liftable object would have. It's private. Let's go back into a liftable object and this will have a. Did I. Oh! I probably don't have to do that. I'm just um, completely off today. Wow, this is just ridiculous. <laughs> uh -huh. Let's. Uh, I can probably remove this one. I don't need to forward it because I was trying to check the collision on the wrong uh, component. That is not what I wanted to do. Wanted to do. Accidentally hit the uh, show desktop. And now, if I run this, um, 
could probably give me the collision. Uh, so now, if I pick this up, and then we... Yeah, we collide with it. Oh, that's the name, I don't care what the name, it's called Interground, and why did this think? I don't know. So, here we will do, um, it's lifted a cost, but the, um, what did I call it? Layer let go. Pulse. When the box lands on the ground again, that's when I can pick it up. And I can oh. now we start bouncing when we are standing on it, and I think I think that we could do something a little bit funky. Moving entity by moving platform so we could fake this being a movable platform or maybe I'll make a base class hmm But I want the boxes when they're falling to be acting as a movable platform. And for that to work, I'm doing things here. Uh, so I need to uh, think a little bit. Because we are the movable platform, the only thing we're doing from this one is to get the distance to move this frame. That is all, really. So what I could do is movable platform instead of Let's just check real quick. Um, we have a mobile platform, but instead of having a mobile platform, we could make an interface here and call it iMovable Object. Uh, iMovable Object. And this would only implement one thing, and that is uh, a few things. Oh, yes. No, we don't want to need one thing. That is the distance move this frame. That is kind of all I need. If I don't have a set here, we can do a private set, right? Yes. Good. Good, good.
movable object implements this. So then uh, here we get the I movable object. that would be the same thing so the recently crown mask and that should be the same for I think so we could probably just add a tag movable platform. We'll add something to the ground and we'll add the liftable object. Yes. I think that's uh, all. And then we go to the liftable object. And it needs to implement uh, a movable object. I think that is a uh, all. Move this to the top because I like having the properties at the top. So. Distance move this frame would then be uh let's see this have it vector three previous position Good position a transform position right here and we'll also do that at the end update and before that we do moved distance move this frame would be um, transform position minus previous position I think that's enough and I think we return here we don't need to calculate the distance when we are carrying it no So we could force the uh, distance of this frame to be vector zero. Okay, maybe <laughs> that this will work. We'll see. Go there, we can stand on it, we can lift it up, we can drop it down. We're still bouncing on it, so that means that we are not colliding with it. Uh, it's grounded, are we? I need to check if we get in here. Oh, it doesn't have the tag. It probably changed it from mobile platform to movable object. Let's do that. Uh, can I not change it? Square and the tag. 
can you get a tag somehow in a we have a mobile platform but this mobile object that's good it's square one yeah, there should be a mobile object okay and now we need to change this to mobile object. This is why I don't like comparing with tags. I should probably make a tag manager. Let's try it now and see if we have any errors from uh, changing things around. No, and we can stand on this. Still no. So let's attach this and jump off this for now. Let's go in here. We are grounded. And now Unity froze for a bit, so we'll wait like 15 minutes. 15 minutes, 15 seconds. Come on, Unity. Let's go. Hopefully, um, it works after a little bit, but this time it didn't. Now it does. Cool. But we are... Okay, it didn't. So now it's attaching it. I wonder if this is an issue with the fast reload script that it becomes... Uh, it takes a long time to attach. To give it 10 more seconds. If it's not working, I'm going to restart Unity. Let's see. Well, we turned around. Giving me like one frame per 10 seconds. Okay. Let's restart Unity. Play the uh, waiting game. <laughs> Here we go. We are back in Unity. All right. Let's start, and let's uh, wait for it to start before we attach the um, the debugger. So this should be triggered, good. I'm gonna stand on this. I wanted this one to be triggered. Uh, so we are hitting objects. We're hitting... One object. It's play collision, which is actually correct. Oh, could it be? Oh no, I started it again. No. Could it be that I didn't change um, the movable object the square? Yeah. So the play collision needs to have the movable object with the square. I want to go into the uh, this and go to play collision and this should be the movable object. And then I will 
revert that one, so it's not changed in here. Okay. What do we not have? We don't have the get eye movable comp. Hmm. We need to get the rigid body. Now do my movable platform does not have a rigid body. So, I'm going to do two checks here. Inefficient, but that's what I have to do. So, with the first check, if hit uh, collider. No, we first check uh, rigid body. That's easy. If rigid body is, let's say, not normal. Then we get it from the rigid body. Else, we need to do both of these inside. Mm, no, we're still going to be the same. Collider instance ID. That's fine. Maybe, maybe this will work. I want to check the deep moving platform. Uh, debug log. Oh, uh oh. So here we have a problem. <laughs> so I'm resetting the velocity if the velocity in these cases. Uh, I think I am resetting the velocity. If we're colliding with it, and it, since it's not moving left or right, maybe. No, it shouldn't. I'm going to do a test with the movable platform. That's uh, a lot easier. Let's put the movable platform over here. Grab this one and this one. The, let's put the speed to 10. That's kind of fast. Or 15 would be even better. Let's refresh. We also need to move the spawn point down here so we can uh, stand there. Or stop it. Let's go on it, and then we uh, is moving. Well then, uh, that is not what I expected. I can tell you that much. Um, My moving platform is not working uh, vertically. It's not at all ready. Hmm. 
with one speed it's wow the uh boop at the end no didn't happen this time uh mobile platform actually maximize this Faster. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. If we set this to 5, we're probably going to bounce quite a lot. want to see that my horizontal one is still working. So I didn't break my horizontal moving platform. Then I will have to fix my vertical one. No, the horizontal one is uh, completely fine. I've actually never tested it uh, vertically. <laughs> All we do is just move, move this frame is what we're setting. But this one doesn't really do anything. We're just taking the distance we're moving. We're adding that to the velocity. That's also just to be safe. Um, make sure we are the platform is moving. would be very low so 0.1 wouldn't be enough. Probably need to do uh, epsilon. In this case we're not working with physics so but we need it to be higher than zero. A tiny floating point. Let's do um, velocity. But x would be zero instead. We have no hits. Oh, we're setting to zero, so it's fine. Lost the Y should always be reset when we are in the air. But 
we're moving the wrong way. I'm wondering... I should do for this. Oh, could it... it's probably my collision check for. We have a different. Um... Thank you for falling. Um. Why am I moving, removing point twenty five? That's the size of the collider for the. Um, I have two different collision checks or distance distances when I do the collision. If I'm falling, I have one or standing on the ground. But when I'm jumping, I have a different one. And since we're move the move direction, I would assume uh, we are in here when we are on the platform. But log in here. Move direction. Value. Why? I assume we are in that check when we are on. We're moving up. When I jump, you can see it working. And when we do this, done. Yes. We are in here. Um, I kind of want to do this check if we are on a moving platform. Okay, like this. Uh, collision laser jump. We're jumping, we only check the ground and we're not jumping here, so that's not. We do this or mm. so the here we have on platform. I'm not really using this, but I should. The moving platform info should be um, Check would then do uh, another class, and this would be as an, uh, moving platform info, and we also want the, uh, the platform. Want info, just moving platform info. Hmm. 
Yes, moving platform info. Platform info. And then we also do this check uh, for on our platform. I'm not sure if that's going to do anything, but I I hope it will. Ah. But from info. platform info and on a platform maybe so and not jump because The player is data has moving platform info. Yes, platform info. We set this. Just a public bowl and moving platform info. Or, oh, I'm not viewing the data, so we're getting uh, we're getting no. Could I instead of having to view it in here? Could I? Like, uh, but to add some T, I will need to add that constraint T. Mm. I'll have to look into that to see if I can uh, new it so I don't have to new it in every class here. I just add it to it um, to the list. That would save me a bit of time. Going up is a lot better. Going down is not doing well. Platform. Take this bit. Oh, good. Could it be a problem that I'm. There are. Player and check on the component uh, moving, but it's very late. Hmm. 
I'm not sure how I would do this. Um, I thought it would work. Welcome, welcome. Any uh, drawbacks to just parental play to removing Patmol standard? Well, I think this is working as I want. The problem is in here where it's lagging a little bit, if that doesn't. So here I. Well, I think this is kind of not working properly. No, not if it's going that fast. Uh, I have a quite complex system where I don't think I can uh, just child the player to an object that is the problem <laughs> I can show you in a little bit we have this let's pause maximize the game view Okay, we are somehow still colliding with it. But the collision isn't perfect. Uh, yeah, the um, the reason I cannot parent the player to it is that the player. position is I'm not using the transform when I move things around um, so easily explained entity equalizer I'm using a vector like 3 a position and all my components as you can see all of these except finalized movement uh, is uh, potentially changing this position value and this is not the transform position value and the finalized movement in the end will then take the new position and uh, transform the uh, move the transform to that position so if, even if I shall this to uh, to the platform we wouldn't get the movement from the platform they would kind of counter each other oh, well, would be moved, uh, but we were still basing everything on the position. I think. So, uh, let me check though, because yeah, I think everything is based on the position. So if something else, let's just try it. Let's see. Do this. Uh, let's disable the moving platform component so that wouldn't. We do it's moving. It's true. Uh, I shouldn't make it move slower. Uh, that is like five or. And then we can take the let's take the player actually and um, put on the movable platform. The thing is. I don't think the movable platform is well. The mobile platform isn't doing anything to the player, even though the player is a child. 
since the player is using a completely different system to move around and forcing the uh, transform position to be in this place uh, based on the position info. So currently, uh, go into script execution order. So here I have my player main. It's running like really late. So with the mobile platform and everything with the transform is happening in default time. And then after that, I'm using my position info to move the player. So the Childing it does, uh, I don't think it does anything. Does it? Uh, we add the speed here. This behavior is kind of interesting though, so I'm still on the platform when I do that. Uh, there's something in my entity platform component is not handled properly. Nice platform right yeah very nice so uh yeah the easiest way would have been to put the player on the mobile pl movable platform as a child the second easiest way would have been to uh, put a joint as you land on the mobile pl platform you put a joint and force that position A distant joint, and then you can uh, calculate how far the uh, distance joint should be. I've done it that way before, some one time. But due to me having this, uh, I mean, it's working perfectly horizontally. There is no issue at all with a horizontal one. So the problem is the vertical one. exactly sure how to because uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm grabbing the distance move this frame by the uh, movable platform so all this is doing is let's move this frame would be our position minus the previous position and you would get the uh, the direction platform mode we're setting the previous position to what transport position is we change the transform position by a simple uh, move towards and then the distance would be how much I've changed I'm not using the uh, max distance delta because I don't think that would change anything. Then we check if the, um, the distance between these two is less than the movement speed and, uh, and delta time, because that's the max distance delta. And then we set the next waypoint. So what I wanted to do was this, is not childing it, the player, but distance moved would be the same as the platform is moving. So I was hoping that I could just add the velocity. Do it.
In here could velocity dot y parallel would be a thing and this should be just the x but I'm thinking <laughs> how we would solve it. In my head, uh, it should work. Like it works nicely with this slow platform, but we get some bouncing when we when it lags a little bit, and not having it. Uh, Now I wonder, I mean this is working pretty well in full screen, but I wonder if this is uh, due to my FPS being better. Everything should be on once. Time for you to go eat. All right, Jammy. Uh, thank you for hanging out. I hope you have a wonderful uh, foodsies. We'll see how long I will be streaming for. Uh, we've gone. 520 now um, and I am leaving in an hour an hour and a half so and I need to eat before that so I will probably be going for another half an hour maybe So what I am going to do is I'm going to add a lag component. Because I want to see if the issue a lag in general that's affecting it, or if the mode towards is the issue. I rarely use a mode towards. I usually do the calculations myself, uh, and this would then have the lag entity component. Entity the script. So all this one would do is override execute. Let me do if uh, no, we need the input info. Right, input in fragment info. And we need to get that as well. Uh, put the info info. Get data fragment info. If, uh, fragment info. We do. Um, I think it's shoot. There is B attack. Let's go with that. Alright. 
example, a uh, wood, something heavy. Uh, I do like uh, would this actually work? Can I just leave the thread? Would that be the same as lag? really test it until the opponent is here but I also want to make it a prefab I need to make it active yeah. we're lagging the game for uh, 0.1 seconds So, lag would make this not work properly. Let's go back into the world. This is from zero object. And this is the movable platform. The mo as it be the twelve. Yeah. So let's fix this. And how are we fixing this? Uh, let's go to the plat. I wonder how. How would uh, do this and how to get it to work? Or is the, is the problem okay? Let's think about this for a second. So we're doing a ray cast down. From our position, our current position. So, this means that if the platform moved further, then we are doing the ray goes down. So, we stop colliding with it. Then we'll at least <laughs> so I'm thinking is it as easy as making a longer ray cast to see let's do test because I think we are in, we stop colliding with uh, it's moving Maybe I didn't refresh, did I? Did I? I don't know. Let's create the bug. Okay, draw ray. Draw line. Um, start would be position info, position value, and uh, oh, it's just end position. Yeah. There would be. Down 
times the distance and let's make a distance two. Color. Let's make it green so we can see it. this should now have a oh, info position value plus it's the end position and not the direction <laughs> but now we should see Two unit long line going straight down. So that is the collision. It's actually going from up here, but the blue line is uh, overriding it. So that is the distance and uh, Could be a thing when we are moving to the top we have velocity going up and that would make our collision be smaller uh, so let's try just doing this for a bit not only check it during uh when we're colliding the ground. Because if we at some point lose the ground collision with the platform, then uh, we will not uh, follow the follow it anymore. Uh, but then again, I'm thinking. I have a new idea. <laughs> so, what if I turn off ground collision? I turn off gravity and I force the Y position to be above the platform. based on the ray. And anything that would like jump or move off the platform would um, would work. So then let's just try disabling Collision. We have collision info here. We're getting the collision info. Good. So if we have a collider here, we do collision info. Enable is false. And if we don't hit the movable platform anymore, we'll turn on collision. We'll also grab the gravity info. Thirty-one 
Go with the info. Can I turn on figure out Go with the info. Full speed value is zero. We could do that. And instead of distance move this frame, we'll also add the um, float uh, white position. Ladies and gentlemen, we are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. And the white position would just be white position would be uh, transform position at Y. Private set. Why? And then in this one we would have handle movable platform and velocity position.x would be velocity x, but then would have position.y would be I'm just going to set this to the uh, if active platform. It's not null. We take the active platform uh, Y position and we plus 0.5F. I probably need to plus 0.9, I think, is the actual distance, maybe. But this will be interesting. Now, how did that happen? And this root. Through there, this one will be happening a lot. Welcome back, Rave. I'm heading out in a few minutes because food is almost done here, and then I'm going clapping. So it will end in a few minutes. I wanted to see if this would work, but my but this is not working properly. Hmm. Hmm. But I will be back tomorrow. Wait, and wait, continuing, continuing this. Um. So what I wanted to do is set position Y to be the Y position of the uh, movable platform. So why would this put me?
that far away. Thank you, bye. Oops. I touched the platform, I just... So with this cube, I'm... on it. The movable platform... Position Y. Just set it to the platform position. For some reason, this one just. Oh, is it because we're not moving yet, so we haven't set the Y position? Mm. Needs to be set in the start. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, so now if we do this, we should be stuck to the moving platform. This will be the last thing I can... Yeah. Now we are stuck here. If I do... We should... Be perfectly on this. Uh, we can jump from it. So the distance there should be one. We move it back to one. And uh, this would be plus nine, nine F. I think. I have to tweak that uh, to get the player height. Now we need to move it up even more. But now we're on this. Uh, now we're moving with it properly. So. Now is the time to check if we can do this, and we can. Then I can get out of it. Uh, well, it's hard to get out of it with jumping if you don't time it at like the top of it, I guess. But if we move, decrease the speed a little bit like this, we can jump out. Yeah, it's actually working. Aha. That's nice. I got it working. All right. Yeah, that's going to be it for me for today. We got the movable platform working. That also means that we can probably jump on the other thingy. Oh, you can get stuck on the side by... No. Yeah, we'll have to tweak this so you can't get stuck here on the side. Because you can't move to the side. So, yeah. Oh, cool. I just want to try one more thing. Um, Okay, let's move this up here again. Let's save, let's reload, and uh, let's play. So now I can stand on this. Yeah. Since we don't have collision, we don't get rounded back with this now. That is fine. I can I can work with this. 
the movable platform thingy could uh, set the grounded collision uh, itself. So that is cool. We got that working. Uh, I'm going to save this and let's see if we can raid the Captain Coder. Is he going strong? Or no, Captain Coder is probably done soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raid uh, Wumi. Who is doing some pixel art. Always a uh, beautiful pixel art. Let's raid her. And if you haven't, uh, don't forget to follow. <laughs> and uh, join my Discord if you want to chat about the game or see when I drop YouTube videos, which will be soon, TM. Uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have anything else to say. So, um... Thanks for watching everyone and thanks for the follows. I hope you will have a wonderful day and I will be back tomorrow at uh, around 11 a.m. Uh, CET, as in Europe, European time. That's when I start and I will probably go for 5-6 hours tomorrow as well. Maybe longer, we'll see. But I will be back then. Thanks for uh, a wonderful stream. Bye bye.